In this session, we're going to start playing with ASREMO. This is a software to fit linear mixed models, but it can also fit linear models. In order to do that, we'll be analyzing some data. And this is a study in which we have a group of three treatments. We have treatments A, B, and C from a medical study. Each of those treatments was evaluated with 14 patients. We have 14 doctors. Each of the doctors evaluated one patient that was assigned randomly to one of the treatments. Every doctor has seen a patient with treatment A, B, and C, and every treatment has a presence on every doctor. This is a typical randomized complete block design because everything is with everything. And we can analyze that as a fixed effect with blocks as a fixed effect, in this case, doctor as a fixed effect, or doctors as a random effect. Both of them have different consequences. Our main objective here is to find significant differences between the treatments and evaluate those differences. We can actually write the model in a more generic way. This is more of the notation where we have our response variable, we have an overall mean, we have the effect of the treatment, which in this case is going to be a fixed effect where we have those three treatments, and we have an effect of the doctor, which will start treating as a fixed effect, but then what we really want is to be a random effect because there's a pool of different doctors. And because it's a random effect that we have here specified, there is a variance associated with that factor in particular and should be estimated, and that's estimated through mixed models. In order to fit this model, then we'll first have a little look at the data and then we will open a pre-made uh, .as file. Let me just open the data. This is under files rcbd underscore dr, and that's the same name for the text file. You can see here we have the four columns, doctor, patient, treatment, and response. Doctor identifies 1 through 14, patient identifies 1 through 42, and this is a bit irrelevant because it's just a unique number of the patient. And then you have treatments A, B, and C in order. It doesn't matter that it's in order or not, the original experiment is all randomized. And then we have the response. Again, what we can see is each doctor has always treatments A, B, and C. And obviously every treatment is on every doctor and that creates some nice balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the file.as to start this analysis. And we're going to fit blocks as fixed and random effects. So we want to open this file underscore dr underscore fr. So I'm going to go to the interactive environment of ASREMO. Because I already have this file.as prepared, I go to new project. Then I go to .as, next, and then I search for the folder. In this case, the folder goes to files, rcbd, dr, and I'm going to select the fr. It suggests names and so on, and we'll just finish in this. And here we have. I have added a few things. We have the first row, where we have rename and arguments. The rename command will create a new name of the different parts we're going to run. And arguments, you can use it for many things, but I normally use it for parts. You have argument 1, but you can put 1, 2, 3, you can put different numbers. We'll see it a bit more in other examples. Again, the title, this is mandatory. And then I have a few comments here where the source of the data came from. We have the data set where it starts with doctor, 14 levels, and then this is a numeric factor. So that's exclamation I. So the patient is 42 level, it also has an exclamation I, so it's treated as a factor of numbers, but this is a bit more relevant because we won't necessarily use it. Then we have treatment with three levels, and then we have the exclamation A to denote that it's alphanumeric. And my continuous variable, which in this case will be the response. Information associated with the analysis, and we skip the first line, but this is the important part, the do part dollar $A, and you can put dollar $B or so on. But the, this represents that it's going to run part A. So this argument 1 is, is going to be replacing this argument dollar $A. You can also have 1, 2, and 3, and these different arguments that will go in different places. But in this case, I will just use arguments 1. Then the fcon is to request a conditional f test, and then the exclamation bnt is to request the plots of residuals and other plots that I may request in bnp format. So one little thing about the do part that we'll see is that whenever you put one, this is going to run the do part, and then you have this command exclamation part one, which means it's going to run that specific part. 
later on we'll have exclamation part two. I'll just put the comment. Remember the hashes for comment, linear model, and we'll have block as random effects. But that will be for later. Okay. So let's go continue with what happens with this code. We call the file .txt. We skip the first line and do part everything that we do there. And this is an extra thing to just ask for some summary statistics. We can also request an exclamation sum here that will provide some summary statistics, and I'll show that. And this stats is some statistics which will be the mean, the standard deviation, and range, and so on, of a combination of things. You have this response tilde treatment, which means it's going to tabulate means and summary statistics by treatment level in relation to the variable which is response. And this is good to have an idea of what the results will be from your analysis. So then I have here, and this is only this time I will have here, but this section is just to give you a little bit of a flavor of how things are specified in this realm. And we already use this one, but just to show you a little bit how it goes, you have a response variable, then you have the tilde, mu, anything that is fixed effects, then you have exclamation r, you have anything that is random effect. Sometimes you have more things uh, we can have and I'm just going to add it here to show you. We have another exclamation F, which is another set of fixed effects, but these are fixed effects that are in the sparse portion, which means are not going to be considered into the ANOVA table. And it's one way to kind of save some memory. Then you have the residual, which is specifying our R structure. In this case, we're just saying units. And then often we have other things, which is predicted with different model terms. And so on. This is just to kind of refresh it that there's ways to do. Normally we only have this part and the tilde mu. Let me just write down my model in this case. So I'm going to have my response variable. Then I'm going to have tilde mu. And now I put every single thing that I think that will be a fixed effect. So I obviously have treatment and I have doctor. Remember, treatment is the main factor of interest. Doctor is just a blocking factor. I could put exclamation R, I could put some more things. If I have more random effects, I don't have anything else. And I could finish my model right there, and it's almost going to assume everything's fixed, there's no random effect, and the residuals are going to be independent errors. But just for completeness, we'll put residual, and then after residual, we'll put just units. Now, a little bit more clear than units, we're going to just put IDV units, which means we are going to have independent errors with a common variance for those units. And things that we need is obviously the LS means in this particular analysis, and in this case I just want the LS means of treatment. And that's going to be my model. Remember that when I run this one, it's going to run the first part, and it's going to give me some specific statistics, so let me just run this. So there doesn't seem to be any errors. Notice here, because we use the rename, we have now an underscore fr1, which is the argument one that is being used in this particular case to just run the first part. There's other files there, but the one that we really need to focus is everything that is fr1. We have the fr1.asr, and it's going to go to the end. Since it has converged, it gives me some output. There's only two iterations. And there's only one residual term, 177, and this is the ANOVA table from the conditional testing. So this is the significance of doctor when everything is in the model, the conditional significance of treatment when everything is in the model, and of mean. So there is no match to see here. Again, let me just see a little bit of the summary statistics. That dot .ass indicates some summary statistics for the different factors. And this could be very long, so it tells me the levels that I have for doctor and how many observations, in summary, how many levels, the same thing for treatment, and then gives some histograms of the response variable or any other continuous variable. This could be useful as an initial check, but I do recommend that anything that you do with your data gets prepared beforehand before you send it to the ace remote. So you can use other packages for that. Now I have the .tab, which is the one that comes from the tabulated. And you can see here I asked tabulate for response till the treatment, and it gives me A, B, C, and we have the means of the different levels. You can see here the treatment C is much higher. These are all raw means, so they have nothing to do with the model, just a simple tabulation. 
you give me some summary statistics and some ranges and counts and so on. So all that is fine. We know for our analysis, in this case with blocks fix effect, and I'm going back to my dot OSR, it tells me that treatments are highly significant. Treatments are significant at less than 0.001. I can go to the PDS file where I requested the predict. The predict will generate this PDS. And remember, I request the predict for treatment, and this is going to average across the doctors, which means it's the mean performance on treatment A across all the doctors. You can see the mean is 45, 47, and 82. Obviously, 82 is much higher, and we know that it's significant, and this is a measure of the standard error of the difference, which we can use, which will give me a high significance. Now, more interesting than having the blocks as fixed, I want to have the blocks at random. And this, as some indicated, it changes the assumptions. Now we have a population of blocks. In that population of blocks, we don't say this is the only 14 blocks. There's a population of blocks. I want my inference to be from that as a random set of doctors that I did pick for the original analysis, but there's a population of doctors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this again on this part. And everything will be similar. I'm running now part two, which means I need to change my argument to two, and then we'll see uh, everything followed by two in the files. And then once I do that, I need to obviously add the exclamation R. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put a comma here. Spaces are irrelevant, but they're just good practice for us to see what's going on. And then I just put exclamation R doctor. You can also put it on the same line, and this could be a bit more compact. So it is really relevant the way you do it. I normally like to have it in the second line just because it helps me to understand what's going on. But the model is essentially the same, except that doctor now is associated with a violence component, and the rest is identical. So I'm going to run this. Should take a little bit longer, and We'll have the same summary statistics on the same tabulation, but the, obviously the bigger difference will be on the .asr file. Everything run, there's more iteration because now we have random effects. And when we have these random effects, we can see on this section here, right, this section here, the variance components that come. Now we have a variance component of 49.35, and then the residual error. So this is the sigma squared doctor, and this is the sigma squared error. 177.4 and 49. So there's a good amount of variability on this whole process due to the doctors. And this has been estimated at 49. And this value indicates that it might not be very significant, but it is still a good size. Remember, this will depend on the number of levels, which in this case is only 14. So this is 13 degrees of freedom to kind of test this variance component. The ANOVA changes because doctors are no longer there. And the conditional value also change uh, because again we are treating doctor not as a block or as a fixed effect as a random effect so we have the same significance now the key point here is going to come in the prediction which is the pvs and i want to see a little bit of the results and i'll go back to the previous analysis the means 45 47 and 82 are very similar to the previous analysis 45 47 and 82 but notice that the standard error in this case was 3.56 and in the new one is 4.02. And that's around a 25% increase in the variance. That means the confidence intervals are going to be much wider and obviously your significance is going to decrease once you have doctor as a random effect. But all makes a lot of sense because before our inference was this is only the 14 doctors I want to conclude about. Now there is a population of doctors from which ones I want to conclude, from which I happen to have 14, but that extra additional uncertainty is, has to be considered into the analysis, and that should affect everything. So we go back to the variance components, and we see that 49 is a good amount of variability, and that obviously is going to affect everything. The only very big difference that we can have here, which is relevant to see, has to do with the solutions. When everything was fixed effects, we have doctor and treatment all as fixed effects. We have some of them set to zero because they are over parameterized. 
and they are in relation, difference in relations to a reference in doctor and treatment. Let's focus in doctor. In this case, we have a zero for the first one and so on for the rest, and this is standard error. But when I look at the solutions from the random doctor, there is a little bit of reorder because treatment, these effects are put first. But then doctors, now you have this set of values and with a different standard error. These are going to be the blaps because doctor is a random effect. And these blaps represent deviations from a mean and they are shrinked because they are associated with some variances. And you can see here some doctors that have a really high negative effect and a really high positive effect on the response. So they tend to affect what happens in the response in a different way. And that's why we have that variability. Not all the doctors are the same. If the variance component for doctor was very close to zero, all the values will be very close to zero, denoting there is no mass variability. So as you can see on this code here, we have been able to analyze the data with doctors as fixed effect and as random effect, and I have shown you what the consequences are of these two 